This SEC West Conference Preview Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Circa Sports. They're back with their Circa Survivor and Circa Millions contest. Fourteen million dollars up for grabs. Get all the details over at CircaSports.com. What's up, everybody? You're watching SGPN. Fuck the Cowboys. Let's go, baby. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. No, we're in football. It's fully. It's football season. It's 2023 football season. Yeah, we're it's already, here. We're already having conversations about how we ramble too long about football. Okay, I thought you were going to talk about the conversations where Colby still hasn't brought in my Phil Steele magazine that I requested. It's no, still, no. still on the back order. Join us here, it's college football. Colby Dan, aka the Dantabase. What's up, Colby? Uh, Nichols, Nichols moved their game to Thursday night. Guys, excited about that one. Another, another Thursday night game on Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, on Thursday, uh, August 31st. Very excited about the future. Just, uh, just got notified that is, of that. Uh, you know, it yeah. was such a confusing statement. It was a great deflection away from the Phil Phil Steele. What are we calling it? Steelgate. <laughs> Steelgate. Mm. Oh, the steel dossier. Uh, mm. For those who follow uh, <laughs> politics, uh, yeah, steel dossier uh, shows that uh, Colby is not. Wow. It's been three mm. days now since the Phil Steel mag. I've I've seen it. I've heard stories about it. Mm. Saw mm. Patty C reading it a little. Over, a no little, way. Yes. No. Patty C got All access right, to so the. Last the steel person, dossier. I, I gave him the digital footprint, and uh, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. He didn't have it. I'm an analog <laughs> man, Colby. I can't. So wait, he gives me all this shit all the time. Yeah, well, about I, I, I don't check I don't check Slack. There's a message I've had in Slack for three months in there. <laughs> all right, it's SOS. But I uh, will say, Colby, you're, uh, it, yeah, you're working at a great place for you in terms of most places <laughs> would care if you were checking your inboxes. Hey, he doesn't do email. He's like the uh, who's he's like, you're like a college football yeah, coach. Da- uh, David Bennett, former Coastal Carolina I, head. Coach. I'll say this for being an old soul. You you are one hell of a young person when it comes to doing things your way. Mm. I don't work these hours. I don't g- work best going into <laughs> the yeah, office. We, we're worried about Colby's work life balance. I don't use typical email. I only communicate via Canva. Mm. I told you I want a pager. I want to live like that, guys. I've, we've already been down this road. I, I actually, I don't like Sean, I, I think that would actually be something. Maybe no, we, we can get to, we can get him a pager. Page, page. Can I get one of the clear ones? That always looks so cool, where you can see the battery you can and see stuff. The you know, yeah, yeah, like. It's wow, badass. electronics are cool. All right, so SEC West. Yep. Before this we is, get to that, oh. uh, obviously football season is back. Ryan, Circa Sports' favorite time of the year is signing up for the circus uh, contests. Obviously, Quick question. I know you got. I know you got a, a whole thing to get to. But yes, I. There's been multiple people who've asked me, "Is this the year that you and Sean?" Act like men and get your own entries. Mm. No, I had my to own which, entry last year. To which I said, "Well, we have had our own entries before, but no, it works better when we pick our entry yes. together. We Thank do it. We do a team entry. Yeah. I'll also be doing a solo entry. I just needed to tag you off the uh, the, the off the rope there to put <laughs> someone in a fucking headlock. Uh, yeah, come on, it's not that much, and you got a chance. I mean, eight million dollars in the Circuit Survivor, six million dollars in the Circuit Millions. Now these numbers are guaranteed. Maybe uh, maybe something happens between now and then. They only get a couple hundred signups. Massive, massive overlay. Uh, best part about Circa Millions, obviously, you're picking five games against the spread. Circa Survivor, super uh, fun. And uh, you sign up in Vegas. If you don't live in Nevada, not a big deal. You can hire a proxy. Uh, we can set you up with one if you need one. Um, very easy to set up. And uh, you're good to go. You can play anywhere. Sign up in Vegas. Good excuse to go to the Circa, aka take a pilgrimage to the Mecca. Go to CircaSports.com for all the details and to win your share of fourteen million dollars in prizes. Oh my god! 
And we will be out there hanging out last weekend in August. So that's if you're yes. looking for a good weekend to come out preseason, recommend that last weekend. Do, do we also maybe put up a page on our website or some material that someone could use to explain the difference between a proxy and a proxy? If you know what I mean? Because I don't <laughs> no, want I anyone don't. to get in trouble. Say, hey, honey, I'm going out. You know, oh, yes. You know that big money football contest I'm going to do? I need that 10 grand for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to. It's only $1,000 for entries. I'm going to go out there. Well, let's say you're doing the. 10 entries? Oh, five five I, Survivor and a. And, I think and, there's a max. And a three, yes. three, three for the pick 'em, and I believe six for the survivor. So that's nine grand. Sorry, one thousand for expenses, but uh, <laughs> or, or for proxy fees. So yeah. make sure that the wife doesn't bust your balls over uh, the proxy. We can maybe help you get sorted there. Just someone you pay money to do something for you. That's all. <laughs> Mississippi State. Uh, I mean, do we do we have to like? Mm. Uh, I, I, Obviously, RIP Coach uh, Leach, Kramer, and I. If you're watching YouTube.com/slash Sports Gambling Podcast, that subscribe button. We are rocking the uh, the Mike Leach, uh, sweet little pirate. Sword. Colby, what Colby. did you say? We need to get a review, like a, a, an image made for social to promote this shirt with Colby. A quote graphic with Colby's never said something so kind about a shirt in our store. What did you say? Uh, did Michelangelo paint that because <laughs> it looks like a masterpiece? Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, that's why you right. need to check out. Shout out Jake. Yeah, Paquin. Watch it on YouTube right now. Yes. Uh, Colby is asking also for Zach Garnett shirts. We're going to have to see Zach Garnett, DC filling in for Mike Leach. On one hand, you like, I guess the consistency, but you, you love, well, you have to, you here. Here's what I would counter with. What else were they going to do? Yeah. No, honestly, it's it's probably the only move they could do, it's, and it's grim to talk about. But the, it's the obvious move. We were kind of discussing this on the SEC East preview, but basically, there, there's a certain like there's an expectation from me of what's going to happen here, and it's going to result in Mississippi State having another coach next year. So, with that in mind, as much as I'd love to get behind the idea that Will Rogers might be the best quarterback in the conference, and I don't know if that's a hot take. Uh, um, yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I was. Lo- that's what I was looking for. <laughs> it's a very hot take. They're the first yeah. team we're talking about for a reason, and so yeah. I mean, plus one hundred on the over for six and a half, minus one twenty on the under. Thirty-five to one division, seventy-five to one conference, fifty-five to one college football playoff. I think there's some, uh, as our friend Bowser would say, some tragic magic, steam being applied to that college football playoff number. It, it's twenty points lower than the conference number. Go figure, and two hundred to one to win the Natty. I don't know. I mean, this this is a to, just to me. They're they're getting away from the air raid, and it's just I, I don't think that's gonna go well because the air raid is something that it, air raid is good if you have like let's if you're kind of have a talent deficit, right? Like it's a good way to compete ahead what? of what talent you have, but now you're losing that air raid. You're you're losing that advantage you have, and you're losing. I think what. I mean, Will Rogers. It took him a little bit to figure out the system, but he he had a good year last year. Well, he was just young. He started yeah. as a freshman. Uh, he actually played in the air raid in high school. And, Colby, what and, do they call the air? What is the air raid? It's like a passing version of the triple option. Yeah, 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 exactly. And how do teams generally transition away from the triple option? Let's look at Georgia Tech as an example. Not good. <laughs> well, I mean, not good at all. Yeah, I mean, there there are examples. Georgia Tech might have made the wrong hire too, but. Uh, I think this is one of the like. First off, the SEC West amazing, always uh, amazing. But this yeah, I mean, this is the shortest win total, and it's six and a half. The, the average win total in this conference. I did not adjust for juice before anyone asks. Otherwise, the number would. If I if I were to adjust for juice, it would actually be closer to eight. It's seven point seven nine. It, it simply is suggesting that it, to think about the number of wins they would need and the, and the imbalance between the East <laughs> and the West. Essentially, they're implying four and O non cons for each one of these teams. Uh, so it, it's insane. Like again, six and a half. When we were talking about the SEC, six and a half would have put a couple teams beneath you at least, and you would have been right in the middle of the, the division. Here, you're you're one of the bottom dwellers. Yeah, and and but Mississippi State's a true mystery team. They bring in Kevin Barbe, the offensive coordinator from Appalachian State, who you know they were. Say what you want about App State, but they they can run 
with the big guys. When they play those teams, they run hard. You know what I mean? Texas A&M found out last year when they played Appalachia State. Uh, Mississippi State does have a good offensive line, probably a more balanced approach, run pass than previous years. And to Zach Garnett's credit, uh, defense was top five in almost like every metric as far as like SEC stuff. So they they have that going and and some consistency. I I just keep coming back to, man, you're gonna miss Mike Leach. Uh, and and yeah, of course. I mean, but but and w- I I have questions. Will Rogers under center? He's never done this. He didn't do this in high school. Yeah. So. Uh, that that's a big red flag, but they're kind of a mystery team. I just don't know what to expect. I would say like six and a half wins is kind of where I would set it to just because they, their roster has talent. They recruit. Well, Mike Leach was recruiting better and better. So it wouldn't shock me. What's that? How'd they fare in the transfer portal? I mean, they went out and got some guys. They did get rated too. you know I mean? Mm. It was kind of a little bit of both. They Uh, took it. Did they take it more than they gave it? I, I would say I would say though they probably okay. I, I, I would say it's like a draw on, on the portal. They got a cu- couple of their better players left, nice. but they've they've added some some key pieces too. So I don't know. It just makes it. This is one of the the most interesting teams to be in college football. Uh, yeah, there, it, there's actually three in this division that I would like. For, if I had to do ten teams that are the most interesting in college football, three would be in this division. It comes down to the schedule too, and I I don't know. Did did you have anything else to add? Uh, just, John Colby. I Otherwise, mean, we can walk through the schedule. Let's go through yeah, the no. schedule. All right, so we got we start out with a cakewalk at home in Stark Vegas, Southeastern Louisiana. The Lions of Southeastern Louisiana did make the FCS playoffs a year ago. <laughs> oh well, I mean, if there's ever going to be a wacky upset, it's it's that kind of game. Unfortunately, I think, like to your point earlier, the defense probably good enough to carry them through a, a matchup like this. Then you have Arizona coming to town, which. I think we were talking a little bit uh, off air. Th- they're a bit of a wild card, the Wildcats of Arizona. Pac-12 then, in general, I think it's going to. Then be you up. have this stretch where it's like we could we can end up end up coming through this and being like, hmm, or uh oh, LSU at South Carolina, Alabama, and then in Western Michigan just randomly in there before a bye week. <laughs> but that that three game stretch, I I think they'll be. Th- I think they'll be three and three. Three and three feels right. Yeah, I'm with three you. and three there. The Arizona game, sure that could be a little wild, especially if it goes off the wheels with Arnett. But it I, is a it is a seven thirty local time uh, kick. At, so you know they have that anyway. But three losses, okay. Coming off the bye at Arkansas, Auburn at Auburn. Sorry, Kentucky is homecoming. Interesting. Nice to get the bye week before the back to back away. Um, I guess, and it's it's not the toughest back to back road. Yeah, and I spot. guess if you wanted to go back to back, or if you had to take a back to back SEC road game, but then you, you probably ha- wanted to be Auburn. But then you have at Texas A and M and the parades, and that's three road games in four weeks. That that's certainly when you see that that on a college schedule in the SEC that stands out, and then you finish up with Southern Miss. Oh, and I love Ole Miss. it. <laughs> love little brother. In the Finally, you know, I feel like they've ducked. I love that matchup, Southern Miss at Mississippi State. Watch out, though. Watch out because, uh, well, especially with the Egg Bowl as a look ahead there. Yeah, yeah. yeah then you got all that Brett Favre blood money why, in there. Why you know would what you mean? play? Hold yeah. on a second. Let's let's discuss this. Why would they be playing this game? That it's going to give them a short week for the Egg Bowl. And Southern That's, Miss, like they're going to be looking past them. Southern Miss is is on the rise. Frank Gore Jr. Beast Sean, dog. They're, they're playing on oh. Saturday, November eighteenth. Instead of taking a bye week before they play their rivalry game against Ole Miss on what do you Thursday, mean, like, well, what do you normally mean they get their FCS there. Yeah, they would yeah. have like a, yeah. It wouldn't be Southern Miss. It would be like Alcorn State. But yeah. I love this. Don't don't call this out. I encourage <laughs> this. You know, no, what I, mean? I know Southern I'm Miss should be playing Ole Miss and Mississippi State every year. This is awesome. I'm just saying. Typically, they're playing a game where their starters are resting. They don't for most of the game. Uh, uh, very interesting the schedule like this. I think the second half of the I, we could be looking at a situation where, as it, you said, three losses at the front end. There's easily five losses on the back end. I mean, they're also capable. Like to me, Arkansas and Auburn are fifty-fifty games now. They're all both on the road, so I would probably lean the opposing team. Making Kentucky uh, your homecoming. They could win that though. Oh boy, they could win that. Dude, they hmm. get the cowbells going. Come on, they could win that, and then seven and five. Just man. How do, how do we get to seven? And I, five? I think I lean six and six. I actually think Southern Miss could beat them too. Like, watch ah. out, Southern Miss is a good team. 
to your guys. So if you start three and three, you you can't lose more than two down the stretch. You got, you got a and M in there. That's probably going to be a loss. No, but I, but hold on. Let's talk about this for a second. Oh, no, no. A and M. That could be that could be a, a nice win because if 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 they struggle this year, they might fire Fisher by then. Oh wow. And then Whoa. and then no. it's where you get where you me, get how are they gonna fire him? They would owe him like eighty million dollars. Oh, I've already they? heard they let one year pass. Texas A and M has fucked you money. Do you man. think <laughs> that Texas A and M could be looking ahead to Abilene Christian in that spot? I'm no, saying though, it, A and M. Honestly, there's a lot of fireworks. You have a Steve Adazio on that staff, Bobby Petrino, DJ Durkin. You have potential for a true shit show. Now, at the same time, you also have potential for them to to go to the college football playoffs. But right. I, you know what, uh, Mojo Wise, I'm a I'm a Mississippi State guy. Whoa. I'm gonna ring the cowbell. Give them over six and a half. The more I think about it, the more Trump. I like this defense. Uh, and it'll be a, it'll Coach be a different Leach's team. Pirate ship is floating throughout the sea yes. with only a pirate flag now. We don't have to show allegiance to old no, squads. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna rock it for Mississippi State. I think the defense and the more balanced approach will carry them to seven and five. Again, it, it may be their ceiling, and but I'm gonna go slightly over here. And the coach of and the ghost of coach Leach is that yeah, what you're I mean, you saw what uh, Madden did for the Raiders. I, I think we could see a similar Mississippi state bump. Give me the over six and a half. Anyone joining me? I think they're going to be anyone six brave six, enough is, to is, swing is, their sword. Come is, on. Is he calling the plays from the afterlife? Hey, you, you never know if there's, if Tra- there's anyone Sean, that, transitioning out of the, the air raid cold Turkey like this, it's not going to go well. You know that. No, I know. You absolutely know. But that. I like their defense, and I think a balanced approach might actually favor them more. Colby, do we have a recent example of a team going away from the air raid? Uh, I'm trying to think. Washington right. State. No, you can't really I compare mean, this to any other situation because there's because so it's many the different. SEC? It's the SEC. It's. I think. I think Will Rogers might be a little better if he's not throwing 40 times a game. Breaking news. I, I do think, I mean, I'll, I'll go lean back into my hot take. He might be the best quarterback in the conference. Unfor- and you're going under. Unfortunately, their defense is good. Yeah. And unfortunately, they're just the tra- You can't transition from the air raid. I feel great about this take now. Wow. <laughs> John forgets my, my college football prowess. Arkansas, six and a half, minus 120 to the over, 100 to the under, 25 to one to win the division, 95 to one to win the conference. 60 to one only to make the playoff. You can see the West prices are much more tolerant of two teams from the same division, 200 to one to win the division or the national championship. Sean is a big fan of the uh, pig. Pig. Suey. Suey. People get very ups. This is going to be a three-star review. <laughs> Doesn't even know to say Sue. He could save it right now if he starts talking about Sam Pulled Pork Pittman, baby. Oh, you love that name. Yeah, he's incredible. And uh, look, uh, KJ Jefferson. You want to talk about good quarterbacks, Ryan? Let's talk about KJ Jefferson. Forty-eight passing touchdowns, nineteen on wow. the ground. We Rock- did lose uh, Kendall Bryles, TCU. And they brought in Dan we'll Enos, who was was previously at Arkansas like four or five years ago, maybe even further than that. Um, this this is one that, that uh, I I think you know I Uh-oh. came we did the preview on this one already, and I came into it thinking I was going to go under because they lose their defensive coordinator. He's now the head coach of UNLV. They lose the offensive coordinator to TCU, as Sean alluded to, and I thought, man, I, this is a, a potential setback year. Then you look at the schedule and you say, okay. Well, also there, okay. there you want to talk about regression. We always look at that. They lost to Texas A and M, which I don't know how you lose to Texas A and M last year. That was like a fluky loss. Yeah, Texas A and M, LSU, and Missouri by a combined seven points. So it's yeah, it's not do like we, they were getting blown out. Do we care about college stats like that when the teams change so much? I think to some degree. I mean, I think there is some consistency no. on this Arkansas team. I think close losses matter. You you learn how to win. Yeah, close I mean, games. if yeah. I had Phil Steele's magazine in front of me, I would point mm. out a lot of he has like teams who close losses, turnover stuff. Instead, you have Lexington Steele's magazine. <laughs> there, don't you? <laughs> I was gonna say, but you don't. <laughs> I I still like it. well Lexington Steele on the rise. Uh, if you know what I mean. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. They they set the school record for sacks last year, forty two. Uh, not an amazing defense, but 
They lost a lot Some of that decent defense, secondary. Though. Drew Sanders gone. Uh, their secondary got plucked away. I feel like uh, their, their quarterback went should to, be good though. Yeah, no, I, I mean, uh, I feel yeah they got they got the uh, Hudson Cl- Hudson Clark right uh, the Hudson Car yep. no no Hudson Clark the uh, the great white corner out there in in the universe you, you don't see him too often <laughs> they're like albino yeah. gorillas. Uh, I, look, I, I actually thought I was going to take the under on them coming into the episode that I did, and I was kind of surprised. Of the re- I thought they did a great job in the transfer portal, um, and then I, I thought the schedule was a little lighter than I anticipated. You know, so let's get into it. Well, I, I, not worth noting, they did. They they also had a they, they relatively tough schedule last year too. So to oh your yeah, point, normally they get a brutal schedule. I didn't. I mean, it's still bad because they have like a month on the road. Take a look at from September twenty third to October fourteenth. Yeah, so uh, let's walk through it. Western Carolina, the Catamounts, they're coming to town. Uh, then they got. Well, actually, no. This was this is at Kerwin Bell War Memorial Stadium. Yeah, they play there too. Little Rock. They basically have two two okay. home stadiums. G- got it. But what? Where? What? Who else plays at this War Memorial? No, Memorial they stadium? own it. Really? Yeah. They That's just, weird. It's just a historical thing, man. That's where you know they do that to to because Fayetteville's in the very north oh, corner. I got it. Like yeah. slavery. Got it. Got it. They want to keep that around too. Kent State Golden <laughs> Flashes. Uh, they're what, they're going to be one of the worst teams in college football. So you got to love that. And Kent this State is at had, their this is at their normal home. Yeah, and so that's going to be. You, they should be two and zero, oh, and then you know with BYU. BYU, coming to town. What, I mean BYU. Mormons against uh, meth heads is great on right? a mission. Yeah, they can they bring can. your toothbrush in your yeah. shit. Right? Yeah, uh, mm, so yeah, you want to soak hard. <laughs> so 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 uh, this get, is a sneaky game, but I I think they beat BYU. But I mean I do think BYU. It'll be a game. Yeah. Like what the spread will be? What it's a night Arkansas game. Arkansas by three, something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but I because because the SEC bias, but. Uh, I would say that'd be that that I got them three and zero. I think they can beat BYU, but I also they they need to not look ahead to that LSU game because BYU could bite them. All right, next up we got at LSU. That's obviously this starts be a, this starts the daunting t- for, yeah, yeah tough tough test here. Then you have Texas A and M, which it seems like we're at all home revenge game. No, 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 that's at Jerry's World. Man. Yeah, oh, that's, so that's what, that's what field. I mean. They spend a month on the road. They're in the opposing team state. So they're. It, it, it's a it's considered a neutral site game that is in Texas. Last year of this, thank God, they're getting rid of this shitty ass. No one loves yeah. a parade more than uh, Jerry's daughter yeah. too, so he's probably ah, real. It's a home tight. stadium for Jerry, so. <laughs> but it, I mean, this is the he's an Arkansas guy. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it benefits Arkansas. That's that's the true sign of power when you can bring your alma mater to your to your home to watch them play football every year. And so uh, t- Texas, so the L- at a LSU, that's Texas A and M on the road. Pro- that's a tough one. Again, we all think Texas A and M is bouncing back. Then you have at Ole Miss. No, which, you're saying I I think Arkansas beats Texas A and M. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, I think they could too. I think it's I think Ooh. this is this is a this is a very. No, interesting I, I like game. your angle, yeah. Colby, about road rash face, and not to mention we we haven't really gotten too deep into it, but. Him in an optimal situation, aka offensive coordinator. No I one th- knows about the offensive coordinator's assistance. And what I think the, I think their <laughs> offense would be. I think their offense will be better, but I don't know if it's going to translate. I mean, they were pretty bad last year, but I I I think they could lose this game. I think it's a revenge game for Arkansas. So at Ole Miss, that that's going to be tricky. And then you have on at the Alabama end, on the back end of f- three weeks. That's dude. That the, and then you have Mississippi State. So within the bye week, so you have a, a three three the three road games. Four. Oh that's yeah. in Arlington, Texas. You're right. So they're, so four. They're on tour for a month. This four. is like the Stones in '69, Sean. <laughs> this is uh this is pretty brutal. Jerry not helping his alma mater. Definitely. Even but, but even if that close was a out game. strong. Yeah. All right. So at this point, what do you have? Three wins. I got. Four, I'm gonna give them. A, they're gonna get one of those. Which one? Either A and M or Ole Miss. Really? Yeah. Okay. They're gonna start out three and zero. So I, I got them four wins. Four and three. All right. Four is very optimistic. At Florida, Auburn at home. FIU. Wow. How that? Where, the airport just shows up right <laughs> in the middle of November. Then they got Missouri. <laughs> no, a, I think they could win out. Friday. This is what this is what I mean. Is look, yeah. I kind like I love the back end of the schedule. Uh, they'd never won at the swamp. But no, I think they're more talented this year. Sean, we know all about this. When teams, teams, northern teams come down, 
come down to the uh, hot, humid weather in November. Yeah, it's fine. It's it's bad in September. The, you're you're proving our point here. Uh, it might get hot though. We we could have a hot one. I like Arkansas over six and a half. The yes, they Ooh. they have a really brutal to Colby's point middle of the uh, schedule. But couldn't that break? Start them? out with three great uh, winnable games at home, and then you close out. No, they should be Mississippi State. They should be favored against Mississippi State on October twenty first. Yeah. So you and then you're that would be win five, and then if you just win. Th- Three of the four at yeah. home, Auburn, FIU, Missouri at Florida. These are all winnable games. Yeah, I, I, I think seven and five is what they're going to do, and I think there's a chance for eight and four. Give me the over on the Razorbacks, Kramer. So you're not at all worried about what that stretch could do to this team. I am, but I'm I'm going over. Well, as long as KJ Jefferson stays healthy, I think if if oh, well, under. That's a brutal stretch. They even got Jacoby Criswell as a backup. I think they're. I think that they're, they're sound. Stretch. They're sound. Auburn six and a half minus one forty five to the over plus one twenty five to the under twenty five to one division seventy five to one conference fifty five to one for the college football playoff two hundred fifty to one to win the national championship. All right, so it's fun. I. I I kind of don't like Auburn either. I'm I'm, th- I'm starting to look at this and like I, I'm going to be on under on everyone here. <laughs> Bringing in Hugh Freeze from Liberty, uh, originally Old Miss. This is just perfect. This is like this is a match made in heaven right here. Hugh Strip Club Freeze at fucking <laughs> Auburn. So remember, have, remember when he was coaching from the hospital bed? Remember that? Wasn't that great? He's had a he's had a wild ride. Uh, big questions at quarterback. Uh, who's going to be the Auburn quarterback? Uh, they just brought in Peyton Thorne from Michigan State, a yeah. late transfer. That was a, a NIL paying off. Sure, sure, there was some clear tampering, but hey, I will say Auburn is trying to win as hard as anyone. Uh, defense, though, really bad. Third most in points. Third most points allowed in program history. That to me is even if they get the offense figured out a little bit here with Hugh Freeze. I'm worried about this defense, Colby. What what's your take, big picture on Auburn? They're they're one of the more interesting teams, as I alluded to. There's three to me in the SEC West that I'm just like they're must watch every week, and Auburn's one of those because Hugh Freeze is a really good coach at you know just just X's and O's. So it makes it very interesting to see how fast he can make. It. And they went out and they were super aggressive in the portal. They brought in a ton of production in the portal. Their non-con is ridiculous because they have UMass and New Mexico State. They basically play three FCSs. <laughs> uh, well, I guess New Mexico State. Jerry Kill had a solid year with them last year, so me- two and a half FCSs. <laughs> and uh, and then that game out to Berkeley, California, to drop acid. You know, like that. That's an interesting one. Um, and then you have if they dropped acid, then played football. You know, they draw Georgia every year from the East, which sucks for for Auburn, even though it's a great rivalry. Uh, but they got lucky that this year they get Vandy. So it was George, you get the best and you get the worst. So um, that, that Col- to me is a nice draw for them. <clears throat> Colby's right. The reason to like them is probably the schedule. Oh, it, only the schedule. Well, you, you or maybe got, you like, they'll be piece. favored in every one of their non-con games Four of those, you know, f- UMass at Cal Samford mm-hmm. and New Mexico state. They should be favored in all four, even though I think they could lose at Cal. Yes. Um, I'm with you. I'm just out on this Auburn team. I think it's going to take because of how competitive the sec West is. I think it's going to take more than a year to flip the switch here. I can tell you this, especially on the defense. Like I, I think Hugh freeze coming in, he knows what he's doing. Though. I, I, yeah, I think he can do good stuff on the offense, but I I'm, I'm really worried about Auburn's defense. I, I think he could, uh, I, I just, I, I like the schedule. I like the fact they get See, this is one of those things with the Iron Bowl being the last game of the year. Normally, when you get to November, you're basically seeing your coach's team in year two. And Hugh Freeze has had a, a pretty good track record of beating Nick Saban, right? Mm. So that's an, that makes it a more a much more interesting game. If this was played in October, I would have uh, you know I would be like Bama's going to lay the tw- you know twenty one with Bama. But the fact that it's at Jordan Hare on November twenty fifth, the final game of the season, makes it interesting to me. Uh, then you add in the fact, like I said, four, and, if they go four, no, in the non-con, I think they can beat Vandy. That's five Mississippi state. I would make them favored six. Can they, can they win one against Arkansas, Ole Miss a and M? Sure. I like the over. All right. We're walking through it. Like Colby said, they open with UMass Cal 
Samford homecoming early. Cal game is dangerous. Cal Cal went with they the, can lose against Cal. Yeah, Cal, Cal went with a youth movement last year. Swan, started a baby. bunch of freshmen. Uh, Stop looking at me, Swan. <laughs> but all, isn't there also the element of just like the situation in Auburn got so toxic that. And it's this, a relief. And this is a they pro- created the, the it's a they release. They yeah. we'll they're they're trying to, to win so hard that they created their own <laughs> situation. Environment. Yeah. And th- it's c- certainly that eff- that impacted their play on the field. And if you just fix that and have a guy that people are playing for, which Hugh Freeze has a track record of. I mean, I think they'll be two and two out of the gate. I think they could lose the Cal, and I think at Cal Field College Station, I think Texas A and M gets that one. They'll be right. favored though in, in the, three of those first yeah, five. And then you got Georgia. So yeah, out of the first five, I'll I say I mean two and three, I could see it. I'll I could say, see it too, but I, I I think I'll say three yeah. and two. Let's go three and two because uh, A and M's a mystery too. Early by a week, then we come out at LSU, not a not the, nope. the best. Those games way. are always fucking insane. Well, and coming those, off the bye. Throw out the throw out the records. Like those games oh, go, go oh, look at the throw history. Out the record books. Go go look at the history of that. Every game's like a three point game. So I mean I would favor LSU, but that game's always insane. Uh, LSU could be looking ahead to the Army Black Knights of West Point. We'll, we'll see. Uh, then we have Ole Miss. Miss uh, revenge game. Miss That's his old State. stomping ground. Yeah, I, I love the re- I, nothing better than a coaching revenge spot, Sean. And then you uh, almost as good as the dump the Gatorade spot. Then you have Mississippi State. They, they could win five in a row right there. At Vandy, at Arkansas. Look out and, for Vandy. And honor, at home, honorary member Swan of the S- dealing. honorary member of the SEC, New Mexico State, coming to town. <laughs> Are they on like a, a, a southeast uh, road swing at that point? It's like the, when the Spurs leave town for the carnival or San, whatever. Sankey snuck rodeo. that one in without anyone noticing. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Alabama to close it out. As Colby mentioned, Hugh Freeze versus Nick Saban always. Must watch TV. So the all right. So let's six three, and six. three and two to start, and then I I'm finding I have to find what Dude, four wins. I like the backside of that schedule. Four wins here, and we get there. Is that is that uh, the right math? I think seven yeah. and five. I, I like I go Shit. over. I I yeah. thought I was gonna be under here, but I'm over. Hundred percent over. How many times has Hugh Freeze won less than? Six and a half games in his coaching career, Colby. Never. Ooh, I was about to say I was, may, once, maybe once. Yeah. Twenty sixteen, yeah. Ole Miss. Going to happen again in twenty twenty three. Well, he Auburn, got, under. I and I was uh, poking around. I did find a. There was a funny post on the internet. It said, "Why are there not more strip clubs in Auburn, Alabama?" So <laughs> ho- hopefully that doesn't turn into an issue. For so me. Ryan, three they, unders to start your SEC West preview. No over. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I had them getting three wins early and then only needing four late. Easy. You guys like this Auburn team? I don't see it. I I love the, the market. Uh, the market. The uh, betting public is with you guys because you're laying minus one forty five to get there. It's a lot because whatever was going on was not right, and so just by having something going right, they are cheating as hard as they can. <laughs> Sean, this team is cheating so hard. They hired a guy and then immediately wanted to fire the guy. Yeah, because they they found and then they better. hired a guy that was so <laughs> scummy enough that they said you're not allowed on in the contract. It's he's not allowed on social media. <laughs> How great is that? Wait, Wait you freeze? Yeah, it's genius. Oh, he was. Uh, what he was DM, his, he slid he up into some... the DMs at Liberty of. Uh, <laughs> a, 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 I don't even. I don't want to dive Wait, too so deep into that. How, but uh, do you know how they're gonna <laughs> monitor this? Is it just he can't have accounts? Like what? If I he has have a no birth? idea. But I, I saw. That that was a thing, right? Hugh Freeze's <laughs> burners are going to be just elect. He's got he's, his kids got a cell phone. He's <laughs> he's poking around on the eye. Let me just check that thing out real quick. Got to make a quick call. All right, Miss Ole Miss next up seven and a half minus one twenty to the over one hundred to the under two twenty to one to win the division forty five to one to win the conference only thirty to one for the college football playoff one hundred to one for the national championship. To me. You have to have a quarterback to win a national championship. Don't think they have. I a mean, it's, but it's, it's, yeah, Stetson Bennett was a walk-on. Yeah, that theory is <laughs> real, pr- proven real out quick, to be I'm, great. I'm just reading some of the Hugh Freeze uh, DM. Sorry, right. <laughs> and one of the messages huh. begins with, "You don't even know Ian McCaw. He is the most Jesus-like leader I have." Before the message cuts off. <laughs> The wow. fuck is this guy up to? It's hilarious too, because like apparently the girl had no idea about the football. But she's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Just DMing me. So, really, he wasn't even trying to lean into the head coaching. <laughs> That's almost a, a applaud. I almost applaud him for that. He's being an honorable creep. 
He's not. He's not and using he his know, cheat code. He does know to use his personal phone when calling escort services. Correct. Yeah, he did a, learn that one. Well, that's a classic uh, one there. And, and that's he. He call. made the big mistake of hiring the proxy and not the proxy for <laughs> his for his contest <laughs> picks. Yeah, and remember, the circuit is not. We can help you find a traditional proxy for. No. The circuit sports contest. As far as a wife proxy, we do not <laughs> offer those services. Although I'm sure those are available in Las Vegas. I, I think if you paid the proxy enough, they might. Oh, uh, you know, you know yeah. Andy is a very accommodating guy. Hey, Andy, if I, throw I can't it, wait to pitch my wife uh, this idea of wife proxy. She's going to be really happy. All the Vegas trips we have scheduled in the fall, and I, our new debut of wife proxies. Oh wow! Uh, who knows? I mean, if you've been Is married, if you've been married long enough, wife might sign off on that. They get like a fifty. <laughs> Get a 50 50 split on the money? This is a this is the segment. We need to figure out a way to have a wife proxy segment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ole Miss, uh, one tick above the floor of the SEC West. That was Auburn, Arkansas, and Mississippi State at six and a half. Yeah, the, see what's interesting here with, with Ole Miss, obviously they have three different quarterbacks that could be starting. I'm sure some will transfer out in August. But uh <laughs> um Who do you think is gonna win the job? Let's start there. I thought it was going to be Spencer Sanders, but apparently, like from what I understand, Jackson Dart is still the uh, the guy that it could be. I don't know. Like I've heard different reports, so I uh, honestly, I really expect one to transfer in August and be starting elsewhere. Um, but we got Max School. No, Spencer no. Sanders. If Spencer Sanders transfers, FCS? he's gonna he's gonna land at a bigger school than that. Really? Look look at the just look at teams. Isn't that he don't like have an, wasn't he like the all time overrated like just scrappy? Dude, he's quarterback. got like sixty starts in his career. No, though, I, like, I know. I just don't. He, it doesn't make him a good quarterback. Quinshawn Judkins. He's a beast. Remember we saw him live. Yeah, he was tearing up a And M last year. Fifteen hundred and sixty seven yeah. rushing yards. Dude ran hard. Uh, he is fun to watch. Defense started out good, but they finished pretty bad in the second half. Uh, last seven games let up 35 plus points. Again, I mean, you know, they're just going to put up a bunch of points, give up a bunch of points. Their schedule is kind of tough, especially early. You know, I think in general. I mean, Mercer at home. Watch out for the Bears. <laughs> All right. They can play, they can go into vault and get a dub. All right. Do, do um, you think Lane can. S- why well, can't I? It, to your point, it does seem like whoever they end up with at quarterback will end up being someone that Lane can work with and put up some points. I guess it's just it's tough to be all in on a team like this no. with these kind of question marks at a, at the quarterback position with the win total seven and a half. Well, every year from cross division they get Vanderbilt, which is a nice gift from the gods. Uh, but this year they get at Georgia. So when you add in the fact that they have to play Bama, LSU, and Georgia, and then like we talked. Touched yeah. on with talent. A and M is there w- in the in that mix with talent, and then you look at the other roads that road trips they have. They're playing at Tulane. This is a, a game they've been doing like off and on for like five ten years, where they they try to do that to and Tulane was terrible to recruit New Orleans. Well, the problem is Tulane got good, so that game's a lot more challenging now. And then uh, you add in at Auburn strip club freeze. Who mm-hmm. knows? And then the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving. Uh, you know that place is going to be lit. Uh, you, who knows in those rivalry games? I, I think I think I gotta go with the under here, just because of the uncertainty of getting. You get Bama, LSU. So even that Arkansas game is after you played Bama and LSU. I mean that that takes a toll. You know what I mean? So I, I, I if you're Arkansas, you're like, hey, this is great. We get them after Bama and LSU. Is at strip club freeze taken on on social media? Maybe that's the <laughs> that's the handle. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. Like it's. Lane Kiffin's just a also just a schizophrenic coach. I, I was just pull. I was confirming some numbers, Sean. So yes. as as we all know, Lane Kiffin, he although all time favorite, he has coached at five, five. He has coached five teams total, including the NFL. How many times has he coached a team for over three years? Hmm. Coach a team over three years zero. This is his fourth year with Ole. Miss. I was about to say this will be the first. He almost left last year. No, he, he had, almost he, left. Oh, for you're Auburn. right. I yeah. thought this was his third he, year. He got fired through his last year with USC. So on the tarmac, you remember that Four. they fired him <laughs> on that, the fucking yep, tarmac. Yep, yeah, that, and that <laughs> was five and three. That was year. That that was in his fourth year. And by the way, he never finished a season under 500. USC should have kept him. They would have. They would have been better off never 
uh, firing uh, Lane Kiff. I, I just I struggle with this one because I think what we saw last year with his team is what Lane Kiffin's all about. It's like let's make a lot of noise early, chirp, 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 and then when shit gets hard, completely shit the bed. I mean, we watched him almost lose to a very bad Texas. Uh, a, a Texas A&M team that appeared to have quit. We had heard rumblings that they had quit, and yeah. and we watched them win uh, just barely by three points. And so, uh, to me, that's the sign of well, a and, that's and a bad that's a sign of a bad a, that's the sign of a. It bad did feel coach. like Old Miss was hanging on by a thread at eight and five, right last year. So no, they were a counterfeit eight and five. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and year before it was ten and three. So it's like it's the sign. Which of a, direction is this team going? When a and team can, lost, Matty Corral. When a team can fall apart like that, it's it's because you don't have culture and and like a strong system. Lane Kiffin doesn't so, have culture. So when things go bad, they go they go real bad. So but they do have a bunch of talent let, on let, offense. Let's go through it. UMass. No, no, no. Not UMass. Oh, what did I? Yeah. Mercer. Oh, I'm, Mercer. I'm, 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 the my, Mercer Bears. My apologies. Yeah, uh, Mercer. Then, which, then the game to Tulane, who, like I said, just at, yeah, you mentioned yeah. that one. Tulane w- fucked around and got good. They're ranked in the top twenty-five. Nineteenth in the country at Tulane. Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets, who are still transitioning away from the triple option, and at, at Alabama, LSU at home, at Arkansas at home, and then the bye week. So. It, to me, you circle the, the Arkansas game. They probably feel like that was one they let like get away last year. They'll certainly but be up for that. You get them after Bama and LSU. But that that's yeah, and and you know that Georgia Tech's a risk because Lane's going to be focused on fucking making sure to he, he impresses Daddy, <laughs> and, and he gets a good couple <laughs> hot takes off. This is a the, tough the schedule. Press. This is a tough schedule for uh, them. Man, they could be. They could have one win. They could beat Mercer and then lose to everyone. Yeah. I think they'll I mean, beat Georgia three, Tech, but yeah, three yeah. top twenty two teams in the first five games. Three That's wins, tough. three wins is very optimistic. Two two wins more likely. No, you got. I think you got to hammer hammer the under here. I mean, I know we're going game by game at, here but, at Auburn. Know. So this is where it gets. But that's that a personal game easier. that we talked yeah. about. Hugh Freeze, yep. you know, fired by Ole Miss. He's gonna fuck yeah. them up. Uh, then you got Vandy. Okay, Texas A and M, which again, reve- uh, personal game. Re- yeah, <laughs> revenge you know. spot. At Georgia, and then somehow uh, Louisiana gets crowbarred. Louisiana in there. Monroe, the not, not Louisiana, because oh, Louisiana is actually all right. ULM is 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 bad. So that's a that, that's a win. Uh, five days before they have the egg. So I guess both teams play before they have the egg bowl. One team, no, but well, one gets a, a Southern Miss hard. and one gets ULM. Big, I do think. Difference. I feel like Lane will get the egg bowl this year and ULM. And I got him and seven and five. So optimistically I've gotten him to six. Sean has him to seven. I mean, again, that was like best we, case we scenario eight. seven. We, I can find no, under. Yeah, I'm thinking like in six every version in every version lock. of the season you can find four losses. This is a lock. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Get, they, them drawing Georgia from the well, east. Well, they they yeah. need eight wins. Yeah. They they need eight wins to get there. I that's that's tough. Cause every all of the games that you would say I would flip it around from what you said, Sean, and say there's not too many automatic ones. Yeah. In here. And You're, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Y- you can't like ban But I mean LSU, Alabama, at Tulane, at Georgia. I mean, just just at just at Alabama and at Georgia. Just the not but two guaranteed losses. Now you only have to get to two other losses to cash that under. Yeah. And right? if things do fall apart early, let's say Tulane upsets this team. Yeah, and then they're focused on Alabama uh, the next totally week, fucked. and they 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 stumble against Georgia Tech. Yeah, uh, yeah. holy shit! I mean that thing things could go bad, and we highlighted from last year that when Lane when things go bad for Lane, he maybe can't recover. Ryan, yes, things can also go incredibly awesome when you're playing over at UnderdogFantasy.com. You may be saying, "Holy shit!" If you win. Uh, a, a share of $15 million in prizes. Are you kidding me? Best ball mania four is here. Of course, best ball mania is the best way to play fantasy football. You're tired of drafting and managing the league waiver wires arguing. It's just, it's no way to play fantasy football. What what's fun about fantasy football, drafting your team and see it. If you win, that's all you do on best ball mania uh, four. And it's a great time. You're killing time here in the middle of the summer. Not much going on sports wise. Shout out to baseball. 
Underdogfantasy.com. Use promo code SGPN. 100% deposit bonus up to $100, aka four free shots to win $15 million in prizes. And they have uh, MLB uh, player props, uh, NFL season player props, tons of ways to win over at Underdogfantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. All right. Now we're talking about the uh, the parade love and Aggies of Texas A and M. I'm th- sorry, th- I keep mentioning my, this is my third most interesting because oh, okay. because dude, you the love fireworks, a parade too. The fireworks. Oh. This could go so horribly, or it could go very good. You know what I mean? Like, I tend to think this is. It's not often you get. You don't often get the roster with the talent and and like justifiable reasons why they can actually get better on offense. Uh, you know they're going to be good on defense. So yeah, I mean seven and a half feels feels low for me, just very anecdotally, especially when you have the parade swag that they do. Minus one seventy five on the over, plus one forty five on the under. Just adjust the number. I know, I know we don't want any even flat numbers because they're not fun. But at minus one seventy five, just make it eight. Five to one division odds, thirteen to one for the conference, twelve to one for the college football playoff. That getting a lot closer to the conference odds now. Uh, which is interesting because I think A and M is actually one of the like one of the teams in the West could get in as a non-conference winner. So maybe the playoff odds are safer there. Twelve to one, sixty to one to win the Natty. Of course, you have to be in on the Road Rash, Bobby Petrino experience. Well, I do think they're they're an interesting team. To Colby's point, like I think their offense. Is going to be better, you know. They no, he le- will definitely make that offense. Better. Yeah, they yeah. led the like, nation in pass defense last year, but they were 122nd in in rush defense. You could make a case they're due for regression. They lost five games by six points or less. That's probably a good sign. But they, you know, you lose a guy like Devin Achain. Uh, he was pretty good. They they also like th- losing close games because you're blowing those games. Yeah. Because of you, yes, is a well, maybe not a regression. To, to the bigger point, uh, I mean, you know, things could unravel here. Like I, I feel, oh, like if and if any team has to get off to a good start, it might be this Texas A and M team because, but they they have a nice yeah. setup for that. I mean, mm-hmm. New Mexico asked, uh, Miami was asked last year, and I don't think they're that talented this year. ULM asked, so your first three games. You have a nice, you have a nice ass runway. Landing. Yeah, uh, nice ass to land on. <laughs> uh, so I mean, I just think, and then you get Auburn in September, which we talked about. Huge strip yeah. club freeze. To me, year one coaches, you, you always want to play, them, play them in September. You don't want to get them in November. So I kind of like that. And then you have that Jerry's World game that's neutral, but somewhat not neutral because it's in the state of Texas. Um, that's not. New. I mean, that's not a neutral Te- Texas. If there's one thing I learned, I'm going to keep bringing up the fucking parades, but if there's one thing I learned from Texas A&M, they love Texas A&M. Yeah. Those motherfuckers are going to be at that goddamn Well, stadium. and how about the fact like last year with them having a terrible season, they're at the 1-yard line oh, in yeah. Tuscaloosa, almost beat Alabama. Yeah. And and the last time Alabama played at College Station, they lost. And I think this Texas A&M team is a lot better from a roster standpoint than that team 2 years ago. Yeah, so I mean do you want to walk through the schedule, Sean? You got anything I else? Do. You, anything else to add before we do that? No, I I think they're an interesting team. I think they, yeah. All right, let's so walk through the schedule because I think it's it's going to be close for me. Lobo, whether win. I'm on the under or over at Miami, some some will tell you that Miami might be good this year. No, that A and M wins. Sean, <laughs> I, I I I'm with. I think I think Miami might suck again. Uh, although this is an ABC game, so we have we have Miami, Texas A and M. Don't I don't. 30. If I was like, if I'm a college football coach, I don't want to play at Florida first two weeks of the season. We're, September Saturday. No one goes to Miami games. Wait, you been to College Station in the summer? I, it might be similar. Uh, not you know. humidity wise. Dude, Hard Rock Stadium is like uh, maybe it's like humidity. playing a game in fucking. So, uh, you're right. They, yeah. The Texas yeah. kids should be ready. Those Texas humidity. I'm just saying, if if I'm picking a, a week to play in Miami, it's not September 9th. Then you got ULM. Wow. So the Warhawks of ULM are honorary SEC I told you. teams this yeah, year. Man. Put, thank you. Sneaking them in. Well, and they already got. I mean, slotted right in the SEC network. The slot. Then you have the slot. Auburn. 
Arkansas at home, Bama at I home. I mean, they, they really Tennessee. could be five and zero. Oh. Like that's a great. So, Colby, yeah. can we real quick? Because we're going to talk about Alabama in more depth later. But it sounds like Alabama could be vulnerable this year as oh, yeah. well. I mean, I think they're the most vulnerable. I I said this on our show, uh, saying that I think it's more likely Alabama goes nine and three than they go eleven and one. Mm. So uh, Hot. they ha- they have they have I, they, just, this would be one of the three, right? I think certainly, yeah. certainly they lost last time here, and they were starting a fucking backup quarterback who's now in the, an FCS starter. So uh, I I I I mean I think that's a dangerous game. I think it's a really dangerous game now. What, so their first loss is either Alabama or Tennessee. Yeah, I would think uh, maybe Arkansas too because it's a look ahead spot. I don't know. I'm not. I'm just not quite as high. Like this team, to your point, Ryan, they figured out ways to blow games last season, and I don't know if they've completely fixed that. I know Jimbo no, no. Fisher uh, bringing him in. It's going to spice up the offense. No, it's well, going to be a little zesty. No, because but I I just don't see a complete like flip the switch. We, hey, they might win the conference we, we type swing it. for them. We've seen it before when you put when you put offensive minds in charge of SEC teams that that will just have a good defense because of talent. Little Joe Brady with Coach O. Whatever, oh, whatever you want to talk about. Saying, yeah. uh, Coach O wasn't the genius behind those teams. <laughs> uh, but bringing uh, in someone who's a bona fide offensive mind who will who has only no, ever, case with it. the exception of the time he just quit like a little bitch in the NFL, <laughs> uh, he he has only ever produced offenses. I think you can look at a lot of teams that have offensive minded guys. Where in the SEC, you your offense isn't carrying you. You have a defense, but the offense is good enough. I think Texas A and M. We we were talking about them in the context of like they were the least explosive team in all of FBS last year. There's uh, they if, were, if you Google Jimbo Fisher fire, there's a lot of like they, they news weren't SEC stories. bad. They were all of college but football yeah, bad. This at is why they're the, one of the most interesting teams no, in college I, football. This they're much watch every week because they have a bunch of characters on their coaching. I, I staff. don't think I I think either either take on Texas A and M. Like I don't think you go, uh, you go super hot or super cold on their futures market. To your point, Colby, I think you're going to be able to tell how many early NFL on guy, what this team looks. Like. How many NFL guys on their defensive front? I mean, on their whole roster, a lot. But a defense. Lot. How many on their defensive front? That's where. That's how Georgia has changed the game. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like their de- de- Texas A&M. Yeah, they got guys. They yeah. yeah they 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 are there with the roster. So yeah, I mean, I guess maybe they lose to Alabama and Tennessee. So two losses. Oh, I don't think they lose both. I mean, I think they'll one. Win. Yeah, I mean, I, right. I, the Arkansas spots a little. Sean tricky. disagrees. Yeah, off the bot because I think if you lose Alabama and then you you could lose that Love Tennessee game Love the back end easily. of the schedule though. Love the back end. Yeah, After so the bye week, it's it's pretty much it's it's nice. No. Colby Colby loves the back end, but uh, he's but one of those guys. We, who let's point this. Alabama's game at Texas A and M is the second of a back to back. Did we walk through the schedule yet? We're 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 in the middle of that, Sean. Okay. No, I'm just yeah. saying. I feel no, like we're I think getting, they could beat Bama. This what he, see see I, what I, he's doing over there? Yeah. He's trying to make the episode longer by rambling as we're breaking down the schedule. As I'm rambling, we're breaking down the schedule. We're talking about how Alabama, Texas A&M, Saturday, October seventh, seventh. Alabama's on a back to back. So yeah, I'm with you, Colby. Let's pencil them in for six and one going into that oh, bye you week. You guys are crazy. They have good situations. I, I I mean, look, I, they have a great schedule. Six and to, one. To me, crazy. to me, I see nine and three. Woo. I think I think uh I'll take that action. Do I, you know who uh who Tennessee sees the week after they play Texas A and M? Alabama on deck, baby. Mm, there mm. are so many situational all right, so six and one. Then we coming off the bye, we got the Gamecocks of South Carolina at Ole Miss, Mississippi State. That's beautiful. That, Abilene that, Christian, November eighteenth. Yeah, what, what a beautiful And spot. then and then the LSU, LSU game, which well, they'll lose. They'll lose that one. But Pur- purple, they played purple. They beat LSU last on. year, even with them being bad. All right, so we have them six and one. Th- they I, I see a nine couple, and three, ten I see, and two. I see three wins there, minimum. Four, what's the win total? Five minimum. losses. Five losses. I'm at. Oh, eight, I'm at eight, nine wins. Yeah, I'm on the over, dude. Uh, like, wait, it's only seven and a half. Yeah, they're gonna go eight. Oh. And, uh, at worst, eight and four. Well, actually, no. At worst, Sean. this team's like five and seven, like a year ago, because their their coaching staff implodes. But alert the guy, the proxy that makes bets for us, not not the other one. That I need to get max play down on Texas A&M over. <laughs> is this Thank is this you. is this a Cam Kerr sympathy play? Or are you all the way like? Oh, I, I I think they're gonna hit the over. Here's my thing. I like if I'm being completely honest. I thought uh, I I enjoyed uh, going down there. Appreciated Cam for hosting us. 
I was shocked at how much they were into the parade. I, I'm not I'm not kidding. I was shocked at how much all of that shit mattered to them. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. And so yeah, I think the excitement that's gonna happen after the start of the season they're about to have is gonna give them the momentum for Road Rash Face to be given another head coaching I, job. I mean, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You're Come on, Sean. Bobby Petrino back oh, at the house. I want him I I I enjoy him as a head coach. And I do think their offense will be better. I just man. All right. I, I don't eight, nine wins is a lot. The, the, and there was a reason they were Ryan, to your point. There was a reason they lost a bunch of close games. Offense, There's a yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their offense sucked. They, yeah. uh, but dude, you got to admit they were right there. They were at the one yard line Sean. against Alabama. Yeah. And they get stopped. They, they still beat LSU who won the SEC West a year ago. This is not your traditional, like shitty team. You know what I mean? Like they, like they beat the no, champs. I get it. That's yeah. why you're laying 175 on the, on the juice. I'll, I'll take the, I'll take the plus 145 on the under that. And again, I don't think they're going to be horrible. I think they will be close. I think it'll be seven and five. Oh, d- completely disagree. <laughs> Bobby Petrino's the answer. LSU nine and a half. <laughs> hey, let's get that sound drop. Minus one fifteen for the over. Minus one hundred five for the under. A normal one, Sean. Two to one to win the division. Four seventy to win the conference. Four eighty to win or to make the playoff. And fourteen to one to win the Natty. LSU is always the team we have to talk about that has all the talent. And can they put it together? It's year two for Brian Kelly. You'll see the trend, the, the tweets going around about you know I guess their basketball coach was in year two and and so was their baseball coach and so year, there's some sort of year two thing going on for for now that Will Wade's gone they're allowed to start raising the raising the championships again they just had like some sanctions but but who cares about that right oh <laughs> I want to know no, about you, LSU wait where did Will Wade go. No, but it was also less miles. I too. know, but where did Will uh, Wade go? He went to McNeese, right? But, right know, down the road. LSU yeah. got no sanctions, just yeah. McNeese. <laughs> McNeese got the sanctions, not LSU. <laughs> Gotta love how the system works, Colby. <laughs> this fucking guy cheats at LSU, goes to some small school, yeah. McNeese State, and they they get hit with the penalty when he gets in trouble. I mean, that it, it's absolutely fucking bonkers. Anyway, LSU, obviously, we get it. They're they will. Uh, as the SEC will probably what Georgia, Alabama, LSU, and Texas A and M will all show up on the on the blue chip chart in terms of having the the roster to compete for it's a national championship. It's a great schedule though. Great so, schedule. Uh, Brian Kelly year two. Yeah. Jaden Daniels year two. Think about year two with his family. They got uh, family. Uh, another. They have two really good <laughs> quarterbacks. Yeah. Colby, make sure we resurface that tweet. Yeah. How do we forget about this already? How about I know, the yeah. other ones where he's got the guns and he's going like this? <laughs> yeah. oh. Those are great. Him celebrating was pretty great. But the guy can coach football. Yeah, and I can tell can. you this. And I, I dude, I, I am pretty sold on this LSU team. Um, I, you know, bringing back that experience, having Kelly in year two. I mean, and and then when you dive into the schedule. Yes, they get Florida every year, but at least they get Florida and Baton Rouge, and Florida's kind of down right now. Yeah, I was gonna say that's not a bad thing to have Florida. Well, and then their other ones, M- Missouri, and it's October seventh, so it shouldn't even be that cold. I know it's a rain that that, uh, that that that's a weird trip because it's Missouri, but I still think well, and it's a back to back road spot when we get into breaking down their schedule. That could be tricky. Yeah, but that, again, they can they can lose two games and still hit this over. I don't even know if they will lose two games. Though, where's dude. the third game? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't even know if where's the second game. Don't have to play Alabama. Um, if if you asked Florida State fans, they would say Florida State. No, they have to play Alabama. They have to play Alabama on November fourth. Yeah, off the. How did I miss that? Uh, but oh, but go. I actually, you know, I think they're the more talented team now. I know that's at Brian Denny and Saban's record's incredible there, but it seems like if there's if they ever lose there, it's either Auburn or LSU that do it. Yeah, so, so let's say they lose to Alabama. Let's just walk through the schedule. Yeah. You guys are walking through the schedule, but while without walking through the schedule, Florida State opening with revenge game. Last year, Florida State blocks their extra point. Yeah, that uh, was a crazy yeah. game. Can't yeah. wait, can't wait to to watch Florida State uh, and this season unfold with the. I love bit of the hype. LSU play. What is that line right now on the on, oh. on the on that? Because folks, get in there right now. Uh, you know what, folks? Get you in know there Coley's right now. serious about a well, he, a gambling bet when he, he he's because this because folks. Uh, you know what? Uh, I gotta walk. I'm gonna be. I'm here. gonna be cold. All right, it's, it's two and L- a half LSU. Oh, okay. Uh, lock that. Uh, I'll lock that up right now. They're they're gonna be they're gonna be Florida State. What can I? What can I? Ma- oh my God! Two wow. and a half point road favorite. Shout out to uh, 
Just giving shout outs. Bet, bet online taking twenty five hundred dollar bets on uh, college football right now. Let's go. Uh, yeah. So we we've got uh, Grambling State. Like their chances there. Oh, you know who their head coach is, Sean? No, uh, Hugh Jackson. Oh really? Yeah. Hugh. Yeah. Is that yeah. a good thing or a bad? Now yeah. is Grambling paying him to lose games like he alleges <laughs> uh, Cleveland was? I love how they did that investigation. No, no it turns no. out Hugh sucked on his own. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He did go swimming in a cold lake one time though uh, at Mississippi State. Oh, I think that's a win, even though the cowbells. But it's once again mm, you're getting a brand new coach first month tough. of the season. They're transitioning early in their transition. You got Arkansas. Uh, in Baton at Rouge. home, yeah, I think, I think LSU is probably not losing too many games at home. You got at Ole Miss, and that one you could say, okay, that's a little tricky. But guess what? Ole Miss is coming off Bama. It's a great it's spot. LSU, yeah. So I, I, I think LSU is undefeated there. At Missouri, back to back road spot here. At Missouri, that's the that's sneaky one. one. Yeah, that is I'm the sneaky one. But I still am taking LSU. But it is a sneaky game to me. Yeah, and and uh, Army could Army could be tough if it wasn't that they're playing at home and they're out of the shotgun now. And you got oh, Aub- right. Auburn and Army not running yeah. the triple option anymore because they the triple option is now illegal. Yeah, it's uh, fucking ridiculous. Uh, so, um, well, I, Colby, this could be the first time someone's listening to us talk college football this year. Do you want to quickly give like a, a fifteen second version on what happened to the triple option? Well, the NCAA basically put in. Uh, a rule that you can't cut block anymore, which is ridiculous uh, because you, you tackle the same way they tell you on defense to go low. (laughs) They tell you on defense to go low. There's a phrase called low man's low man wins, but on offense, you can't go low. Apparently this is some bullshit from TV execs because the game times are running at like two hours. We're at 15 seconds. (laughs) What? Uh, when you run the triple option, the time the, the TV time goes super fast. Not enough ad to ad blocks to sell. (laughs) Get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the the army. We're getting killed over here in the CBS. I imagine the. I got something to tell you. First thing we got to do, we got to crush Army in the triple option. They have in Georgia Tech. They're crushing our college football ratings. We can't sell Tide Pods, and we have <laughs> games that only last two hours and thirty minutes. What do we do? Step one: we eliminate the triple option. We can't just eliminate it. How do we eliminate it without eliminating it? Oh, we say we care about player safety. Player safety. And, and t- and there's two angles. The other coaches are saying, "Hey, we don't want to. We, we there's they only don't want to prepare. There's for only it. four teams that run this shit. No. Uh, we we got to really prepare for this. No. And then you add in the fact that the time slots, and you get a perfect bullshit Nick, storm. Nick you know Saban. I mean? run, Nick Saban runs college football, and he's getting tired. And no longer wants to tolerate the triple option. Yeah, I mean, so going into the bye here, they've played eight games. I. I would be very I'm with Colby. The fact that this spread of LSU Florida State is is around a field goal seems pretty crazy to me. I don't I'm not buying Florida State. Uh, please don't buy PSA, don't buy Florida State. Haven't you seen this? We've seen this movie before. Like what what are we doing here? LSU is going to destroy them and we're going to be like, "Oh wow, uh, SEC's good." They were fortunate <laughs> to catch them Brian Kelly in game one of a brand oh, new system a year ago. He's had the whole yeah. off season to prepare. Yeah. I don't love Brian Kelly, the person, but he, he, like, he's unfortunately a he's really a good, football, good coach. football coach. Yeah. I mean, look he's at Notre Dame. He, look what happened. To, I mean, who knows? Right move. Great move. They embraced them. They, you know, who didn't call him out for being a fake bitch, the LSU fan base. So, you know, this is how another step to winning. I, I, I think the, in a in a in a wacky world, they probably maybe they drop one of those road games in the back to back slate. So I'll say they're seven and one. Sure, I have them beating they Alabama. Could be eight and zero oh, though, and then coming up. Uh, yeah, I mean it is it is in Alabama and it is a revenge spot for Alabama. That's but, but they have had success. If there's no, one team I, that's had success at even, Alabama, yeah, even yeah. pre Brian Kelly, they've always kind of had their number. I I just think they're a much better. Roster right now than Alabama. Like I trust their quarterback position. Jaden uh, Daniels is like been yeah. starting for fucking ten years. I he, feel like he's got yeah. Stetson yeah. Bennett vibes. If Stetson Bennett was a five star, Jaden Daniels to win the Heisman. Oh, I think we've we've had this conversation. Uh, he he was certainly someone we we peeked in a little closer at. Uh, twelve to one. I, you know what? Oh wow. I, yeah. Okay. It, well, that makes sense. He's no. It, it, it he's I on. Mean, he's on a team that can win the national yeah. championship. Plays in the SEC. Is going to put up some bonky, some wonky stats in some of these games. So yeah, just working through. So I'll say seven and one coming out of the bye. You got Alabama Alab- at Alabama, Florida, Georgia State, Texas A and M. 
you know, I I'm kind of with Colby. I could see them getting real hot here and running the table. Gotta love the road schedule there. I feel like I've I've conservatively I could see uh, I could see them running the table eleven and one, even ten and two. They all get home to the over though. Yeah, I'm all right? over the over. Yeah, Colby and I uh, hit our lock last year in the. We only did one Under. lock in the SEC West. LSU over six. Over that six. that came yeah. in uh, pretty easy. Kramer pushed his with Auburn, but um, we all did pretty good over unders last year in the SEC West. Uh, uh, yeah, so to me, this this LSU over is also in a lock potential, but maybe they're they're actually one of the teams that you can get some value in the futures market. Mm. Alabama ten and a half one one fifth plus one fifty to the over minus one eighty to the under minus one hundred five to win the division two ninety to win the conference. 155 to make the playoff, six to one to win the national championship. All I've heard is is that this is the worst Nick Saban team in a while. And I've also well, well, you well, lost the Heisman. I mean, Bryce what was Young there? And Will Bryce Anderson. Young and Will Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one and two in the and what was and there? Not one and three. Yeah, and Jameer Gibbs was very good. And Jameer Gibbs yeah, was yeah, quite. Yeah. What, what, what was Wait till their, he gets to Detroit. What was their record <laughs> last year? Uh, ten and two. Ten right? and two. But they almost were eight, eight and four. Should have lost to Texas. Yeah, yeah they had some. Sh- you could argue should have lost to A and M, but honestly, okay. they should have beat Tennessee. So like, they, okay, yeah. So we'll say there. nine yeah. and three, maybe you split the difference. But they had Bryce Young, and, and, and how many games did we watch where Bryce he Young really saved that team? Texas, was, right? <laughs> yeah. Even though he was down, the Texas. Auburn game the year before. Uh, I mean, the LSU. It, it didn't game, feel like yeah. this. Alabama team, and again, it's obviously easy seeing this in hindsight, but it didn't feel like it was a special Alabama team. It didn't feel like a particularly dominant Alabama team. It felt like Bryce Young was special, and I think that carried a at least by Nick Saban SEC dominance standards, somewhat a pedestrian team compared to how good his other teams. Well, were. it's crazy because the NIL becomes legal and the transfer portal starts happening, and uh, you know. Start to see a little bit of change. A little competition, a little change, right? Look, co- hey, hey, we're all able to pay our players, Coach Saban. <laughs> um, no. LSU, Alabama. You don't, ever, you don't think a guy ever got improper benefits? Oh no, no, no! At Alabama, <laughs> where the murder, like, passed the gun around. How right? dare you, LSU? Uh, LSU, Alabama, right now, spread is five and a half. Bama's favored by five and a half. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take the points on that. That, that feels like a number that won't exist on November fourth. Uh, this season. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, with Alabama, it just seems like it, doing some basic ass shit. They didn't have a team that was unlucky last year. If anything, we just gave out a case that they were a little bit lucky with the wins and they, they lost a you know, generational quarterback mind in, uh, in Bryce. They lost, I don't know, one of the better college defenders of the, of the past couple decades. And just in general, and and you know, throw Jameer Gibbs in there as well as as kind of an elite elite NFL playmaking type of of player. I'm sure they're going to reload just fine. Yeah, I mean, but they they're have, not going to reload. Yeah. Bri- the area they're not going to reload is Bryce Young. You, you, you know what it reminds me of is when you had this unbelievable run at Clemson of oh, Ke- yeah. Kelly Bryant, Deshaun Watson, and Trevor Lawrence, and now all of a sudden DJ U steps in, and you can, there's He's just dumb as shit. No, there's just like just it's dumb. hard to consistently <laughs> have that great of quarterback well, play, and they've had hurts to Tua, to to Bryce Young, and guess what? Now they're panicking, and they go bring in Tyler Buckner from Notre Dame, who couldn't he, even start at yeah, Notre Dame. Yeah, he's hard. You know what I mean, like, uh, so it, it what tra- about what about Jalen Milrow? He's solid, but he's a running quarterback, so their their whole mo That's is going to have to change a lot. Like, like, yeah, the new look Alabama has been Colby. passing the ball all over the place. What if they come out and some, run some modified triple option? Oh my how, god, how electric would that be? It would oh, be, be the fantastic. most torn Colby's ever been. If, <laughs> if he dusts off the uh, wishbone offense, Saban. Well, the last he, gift Nick Nick Saban gives college football is the triple, the reborn triple but option. He, but he but he hired what's his name from uh, he hired Notre Dame's offensive coordinator Tommy Tommy Reese. Reese. Yeah. Yeah. That that doesn't that was even a weird hire to me. Now that that does mean I think they're going to emphasize on the run a lot more because I think they got to play to their strength and to, their strength to, is their as far as line. Um, them not being as special at least uh, compared to previous years. Eleventh in yards per game last year, which you know normally sounds sounds pretty good, but that was actually the first time outside of the top ten since 2017. So, what was was Notre Dame? 
such a good offense that, no. that Tommy no. Reese to be regarded. In. It was so, a very like, interesting hire to me. Be, like, like we, we make I mean, fun even of just the, no Bryce Young, no Will Anderson. One and three in the uh, NFL. Can I draft. add one? Yeah. How about an uh, NFL offensive coordinator? Like yeah. How how about an offensive coordinator that we make fun of some of these offensive coordinators that As run through uh, that ru well uh, that run through the Nick Saban system, but Bill O'Brien has a proven track record no, of being he's good a offensive great mind. College Steve OC. Sarkeesian generates <laughs> offense. Kiffin, where Kiffin yeah. offense like here's that's what's not interesting. Tommy Wait, Reese. Let me, but Tommy let, Reese go back to Steve Sarkeesian. Steve Steve. <laughs> Oh, oh, Sean, that was that yeah. was medical. We're not supposed to release that kind of stuff. Medicinal. On the air. Yeah, he, didn't he try to sue the university? Oh, he, he sued you. That was great. For it's like, wait, you're gonna sue me? <laughs> what are you talking about? You didn't show up to practice. The fucking onions on this guy. It's like, uh, yeah, but I was drunk. We've been on, uh, we've been mm -hmm. on a kick here, uh, or I have a, a fighting great names. Alabama tops the list with Kool Aid McKinstry. Yeah, oh, nice. yeah, he's good. He's very good. Um, he, apparently, according to his grandma, he's his smile. Reminded her of the Kool Aid Man. Great quarterback for Alabama. When's the last time you had some Kool Aid, John? It's been a while. It's been a long time. My parents wouldn't allow me. You're more of a Tang Very, guy. Tang. Oh, I love into Tang. I love Tang. So purple, delicious. Pur purple stuff here. <laughs> you can find you can find some of that in uh, Las Vegas. You, you know, gotta be careful though. You gotta well, make sure you get. The <laughs> most kids won't, um, won't 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 remember the Sunny D. No, no, but hear me out on the Tommy Reese angle. He was with he was Brian Kelly's offensive coordinator for a long time. I think Saban has to ha, like I I do think I've always thought that Brian Kelly if you gave him Saban talent Brian Kelly would beat him and it happened last year in year one right how do you get back at that maybe you try to understand Brian Kelly you bring in Tommy Reese because that's your biggest competition in okay. the division that's the only thing that I can make sense of then why did Notre Dame suck last year for several reasons I think but um they don't have wide receivers Notre Dame is, is doesn't have the same talent level as like they, their academics still actually play a role they don't bring in people yeah, that I, yeah I, I'm with you uh, to a what's certain the extent. lowest uh GPA you think you could get in if you're an Alabama college football like <laughs> five at, star yeah five star yeah they really want what you. position do you play quarterback you're a quarter. You're a dumb quarter. Like you can't get good grades, and you're a quarterback, but you're still a sick quarterback. So you're like yep. Vince Young. Yep. All right. What do you? How low can your GPA? Dude, they doesn't matter. Will bend the rules. Yeah, they the, are in. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah they'll figure that. Out. One just, point two. Yeah, no. Yeah. What, GPA is just a number, bro. Yeah. We'll, you want me to print up some? You can. You can go on the internet right now. I guarantee, yeah. and find some Discord server where a dude from fucking Serbia will mail you documents. Oh, you can find yeah. Ukrainian yeah. Yeah. Uh, our, our you, troop. Uh, I. <laughs> what we're doing with our troops on Discord. I once worked for a guy hey, who bought job. a degree on the internet. <laughs> uh, I mean, like it didn't have a fucking GPA, but he hey, got he bought a degree. Good reminder to join our Discord. Uh if you if you need to fix your uh, high school GPA <laughs> or just want to hang out, Sports Gambling uh, Podcast Discord. We got you covered. Well, Jake's pretty did, good. Did he buy his now. degree from what was that high, that fake high school that played last year? Oh, uh, Bishop Sycamore. Bishop yeah, Sycamore. Bishop Sycamore, maybe he got it from there. I was all honors at Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took a lot of AP classes. <laughs> Class didn't, of, didn't take the college class of credit. 19. All right, let's bitch. rattle off the schedule. Uh, what do we got, Kramer? All right, we got Middle Tennessee State. We got Texas, little uh, rematch, home and home there. This time it's in Alabama. Then we got at LA, uh, UCF. A USF. Sorry, USF. This is we the got, sneaky one where they oh. want you to think that hey, we're we're sympathetic to the group of five. We're gonna play a no. Yeah, it's no, at Raymond this James. Is, uh, don't spit at my ass and tell it, me it's raining. It, this is gonna be 90% Alabama crowd. They did this on purpose. This is a. This uh, is a. You think Alabama fans show up for this game? They like yes. pirate ships. They love. Uh, Tampa's not far away, man. And uh, but and they don't show up for Alabama home games. Well, he's, he's what's going on here? Funny here. He's doing a bit. No, I mean, wasn't wasn't oh, Saban <laughs> wasn't Saban the one oh, campaigning? No, for, no, that was for Alabama home games against the FCS teams. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I obviously he was calling I know. them out yeah. for not showing yeah. up to the games. I'm not just saying. The end. You think they will get excited oh, to wow. travel to USF? Of course. Yeah, Come yeah, and, and that's fertile recruiting ground. That's oh. the reason why they did that, and, and it's like f an hour away from the university. Oh, I, I appreciate so, yeah. the, the effort. That was yeah. good. I yeah. like that because Nick Saban did call his fans. Out no, like he did. Bitch. He called them out for not showing. Total, well, total yeah, grandpa. That was the, like the, for the Western Carolina game, and it's like, well, yeah, why would they go? The spread was 54. <laughs> All right, then you have this stretch where they go. So, you know, not a, not a true road game because. They do you uh, just to be clear, USF does not play their home games at Raymond James. No, they do. They do. But okay. It's, but it's it's like an hour. So from it's, campus. it's a true road game. Yeah. 
So they they do play three road games in four weeks here. So you got at USF, Ole Miss, at Mississippi State, at Texas A&M. Then you have Arkansas and Tennessee into the bye week. I could see why people are saying they're vulnerable here. They do play Texas. Granted, Texas is on the road. Uh, Sark against Saban. He had him last year. Yeah, they should have beat him last year. They should, and that they was really with Bryce Young. Him. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the quarterback situation will leave them ripe for upset here. That is, that's what I'm saying. That's a very tricky game, especially early on into a brand new, you know, brand new offense coordinator, brand new philosophy. If you're going to be running the ball a lot more, what Texas, do you think? What do you think the spread is? Which game? Texas, uh, Alabama. Uh, I don't would, look it up, Sean. No, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, cheat. Texas at. Uh, I think you would have to make Alabama lay in seven and a half. It's six and a half right mm, now. What does really? that tell you? Uh, it tells you they don't believe in Alabama if they're if they're laying less than a touchdown at home. Or it got bet there because people know that this fellow team, sharps like this me. team could be weak. You know, at at Texas A and M, there's you know we always like the Jimbo Nick Saban bad blood. I think they have at least one loss before the bye, if not two. Two, yeah, I think two. I think two losses before the bye. I think they lose. They drop Texas and they drop. They they drop. You only uh, need A&M. to get to two losses. I mean, read off what we got post by, but yeah. At, then you have LSU at Kentucky, and then somehow Chattanooga gets drops in there. <laughs> the mocks right November eighteenth, yeah. really right before the end of the season. And then at Auburn, and that's the tricky one too. Like I said, Auburn. You know they didn't play at Auburn until nineteen eighty nine. They're oh, they, they freeze. Baby. Alabama is six and ten in playing at Auburn since then, and. When you add in the mix that Hugh Freeze has had success against Saban, that's that's a wild card game to me. And you know, obviously, I mean the and the at Kentucky game, oh, well, this I is think easy. is sneaky, right? Because coming off LSU, the LSU game, yeah, I guess if they lose to LSU, they'll be super fired up for that Kentucky game. But I could also see them having like a mini tailspin here if just to, or even if you if you beat LSU, especially, it, it would be easy to overlook Kentucky. That next week, I there's just so many scenarios where this team loses two games. I think they're ten and two, and there's a stronger yeah. chance that, that they're nine and three than eleven and one. Well, and unfortunately, oh, that, it's minus one eighty. But that's I, I'm exactly with you. what Colby said earlier. Maybe we look for an alt under nine and a half. Yeah, yeah, or just play under ten because minus one eighty is not that fun. Where are you going to find under ten? Most places are genuine, honest working people <laughs> who are going to dangle. I feel like so many totals numbers. you see flats, but why, but why not do the nine and a half? You want some yeah. insurance? We don't buy insurance. You're right. Either. Give yeah. me the nine and a half <laughs> Alabama nine and three. Like Colby said, Hey, make sure you well, said, I said 10 and two, but it's more likely for nine and three than, uh, than 11 and P- one. Put that on a graphic. <sighs> yeah. Smash the subscribe button. YouTube.com slash sports gaming podcast. Turn on auto downloads. We got our locks coming up, Ryan. What do you got for us? I know people are very, uh, very interested. I ended up pretty balanced on the over unders. I was worried about that uh, right out of the gate. Uh, unfortunately, I, I feel obligated to do this, but Mississippi I have four unders. Very good. Three overs. Uh, I really, I do like the LSU angle. Uh, I don't think I'm going to play that as a win total, though. Ooh. Give me Texas A&M to go over their win total. Give me Mississippi State to go under, transitioning away from oh, the air wow. raid. Will pose wow, right. to be difficult. Future, I like. I, I think there's a the LSU to win the division at two to one. Alabama vulnerable. LSU with that nice ish schedule. Um, I certainly like a dog to come out on top here. And I, I think a and M there's too many question marks. I, I think I'd rather play the over for the win total there. So yeah, I'll say it's a, it's a, we, we tigers. I'm going to be, I, I definitely am feeling like I need to go to the, the store and get the LSU college experience shirt. Mm. Cause I campus tour edition. feeling I'm going to be an LSU guy this year. For me, uh, I'm with you, Ryan. Give me LSU over nine and a half. Like Brian Great pick. Kelly. Great pick. Like what they've done there, you know. I I don't get them getting them to three losses. I think is is pretty tough. Uh, for my second lock, we we I mean I, I'm someone's got to lock up Alabama, right? Yeah, I'll go Alabama under ten and a half. Keep it simple. 
Uh, for me, my future LSU to make it to the college football playoff at plus 480. Because I think if they win the conference, Ooh. or again, like they could be Ellis, like why would you play them to win the conference? If they win the conference, they're in the playoff. But why wouldn't you take the plus odds? Because if they lose in the SEC championship, they're still probably making the playoffs. Yeah, maybe, yeah. right? Yeah. At least there's a world you could get into the college football playoff without winning the conference. There's not a world I, where you can get in win the conference without winning the college football if playoff. they make the college I'll I'll parlay what you just said and go a little further. If they make the college football playoff, I don't know what mechanical parlay is gonna exist in front of them that wouldn't get you from the four eighty to the fourteen hundred fourteen okay. to one. The that the na the national championship price might actually be better for LSU right now. Mm. Uh I mean I hate to be a copycat here, but I came into this already thinking LSU over nine and a half, Bama under great ten and a great half. Great minds think alike. Colby. And LSU plus four eighty. What's what? No need to be ashamed. Yeah. I mean, if I've ever, I'm, I've, I've never been this close to one man kissing another man's ass. Uh, disgusting, really disgusting act. Where's Joe? Ah, completely, Buck you, completely. Where's valid. Joe Buck when you need no, him? No, uh, no need for Joe Buck. The, I mean, the affirmation bias boner that Sean's sporting under the oh, table. Oh, it is right great. Yeah. Uh, you know, when a, when a college football expert like Colby Dan comes yeah. on, validates my gut handicap, and it it feels great. Right? I, I I agree with the picks too, for what it's worth. <laughs> Well, I trust Colby's opinion. That's why I subscribe to the college football experience. Download all 133 team previews. Uh, keep it locked here. We got our NFL previews right around the corner. We're doing 32 NFL team previews. We already put out our fantasy team previews. It's the summer of football, baby. Underdogfantasy.com, promo code SGPN. Get in over there. Again, subscribe, rate, review, turn on the auto downloads, and tell a friend, tell a buddy. DJ Army is growing. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stegging the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Uh, R.I.P. Coach Leach. Kramer, let it ride.